So unlike other Fire Emblems, it does take a little bit of time to like actually get into any kind of plot. Into the, like the central plot. At least like a couple of chapters, I think. Alright, so over there on the left we have, uh, well, I guess now she's on the right. It's Titania. She is the second in command of the, uh, of the mercenary company. Alright, and, uh, it looks like uh, we've got reports of bandits. A couple other names that we're not going to worry about just yet. There's Oscar, he's the game's green knight, because all these Fire Emblem games have to have a red knight and a green knight. Cavalier, specifically. Yeah, that is... that's Oscar. Alright, Ike's got the, uh, the nerves. We get to witness uh, bandits doing what bandits do, which is be incredibly rude. And I guess we're going to get a brief overview of the situation. This isn't going to happen in like every battle. But, uh... Got some tactical advice, which is take advantage of your numbers. Uh... And, you know, don't send someone out, uh... You know what? You're right, Roz. It really is uh, a little heroic. All right. Okay. Uh, oh, this is where they're going to talk about the uh, weapons triangle. Uh, if you're familiar at all with Fire Emblem, you know what it's like, but just to make it uh, clear, that's what Titania is saying right here. Axes are strong against lances, which means they have uh, they will deal a little bit more damage, take a little less damage, um, and have better accuracy and evasion. Uh, lances have an advantage over swords, and swords have an advantage over axes. And uh, what a coincidence, you got the three representatives of the triangle right there on the screen. <laughs> oh, I like Ike and Boyd. And we're also getting our tutorial about uh, visiting places. Uh, I'm not actually going to watch it. So the idea is... Uh... Alright, uh, do I want to go through a whole tutorial? No. So what's different about mounted units in this 
game uh, compared to the GBA uh, is that when they take an action that's not... Uh, no, when they take an action uh, at all, even attacking, uh, they can use up the rest of their uh, movement for that turn. Uh, We got a nice steel sword for our troubles. All right, it, it, waiting just ends the turn, ends their movement for the turn. But any other action, like using an item or trading or, like I said, attacking, um, they'll be allowed to use the rest of their movement. Uh, so we'll just, I don't know. That's as good a place as any. Uh, Let's see. Does this have the glitch? Yeah, this was uh, actually kind of a glitch in this version. You see Ike is loaded down with four swords. Uh, that was not intentional, but uh, I sure as hell am going to take advantage of it. Uh, and speaking of inventory, this is also worth pointing out, in my opinion. Um, Units now have separate inventories for their weapons and their items. Uh, so you, each unit can have four weapons and also like four healing items or you know support items or whatever the case may be, uh, which is really nice, really convenient. We'll just send in Ike to uh, work this guy over. And again, the, the animations aren't super great. Hey, Frost. I'm not a huge fan of these animations. Uh, you know what, also, I'm gonna turn up uh, game speed. <laughs> That's moving a little slow when they just kind of trundle along like that. That's a little better. We'll just go axe on this guy. Well, at least we got a critical. This is true, the animations are better than the DS games. I did watch a Let's Play of uh, the DS games, and they look like... How do I describe it? Well, so... It looks like they were animated as, say, PS1 sprites, or like that kind of era. Or not PS1 sprites, but like PS1 models, like low poly. Uh, they were rendered as that, and then like flattened into sprites. Kind of like, you know, what they did with Donkey Kong Country, except uh, they don't look especially great. And the animations are just not at all lively, so these ones are better. That is true. Uh, but these ones still don't have the, uh, the flourish of the GBA games. I'll just move Titania back. Because I'm not trying to use her entirely too much at the beginning of the game. house is getting destroyed. So that was also like a, a demonstration that bandit units, and specifically bandits like this guy, uh, they can and will destroy the houses that you can visit. Uh, this one right here is not one that you can ever save, so don't worry about it. Uh, but can't really help them out. Uh, let's 
see. How do I want to do this? I might just have Oscar protect this place by visiting, telling them to lock up. Got a nice seraph robe to start things off. Uh, actually, I want to move. Put Ike here. And then we'll see if the enemy is stupid enough to go after Titania. So the thing about Titania is that, you know, every game has the, uh, kind of the crutch character, you know, the who's uh, considerably stronger than your units and can help you out in a pinch. And they fall under two archetypes. There's the Jagan, uh, named after... The one from the very first game, of course. Uh, whose starting stats are pretty alright for, you know, the beginning of the game, but uh, he has terrible growth rates. So he's not really going to get much better, and eventually he's going to fall behind the other units. Uh, Titania, on the other hand, despite being serving in that role, she actually has like some pretty good growths. So, I'm not going to try to rely on her too much at the beginning. Oh, I can't get the kill with Oscar. Uh, but, once other units start catching up to where she is level-wise, uh, she'll still be able to contribute and be, like, a solid part of, uh, of your army. And, you know, the thing with these games is that you can't always predict how, uh, how your units are going to turn out. Strength and skill again? Okay. Uh, you can't always predict how they're going to turn out. Uh, so I'm not going to promise that we're going to see her the whole game. But it's possible. I just realized I probably should have sent Boyd in to do that, but uh, it's fine. I'm going to leave Boyd just out of range of the, uh, the Myrmidon up there. Oh, there's a tutorial about giving and taking items. Oh no, that's for rescues, not items. Uh, but I'm gonna give Ike that steel sword just to give him a little more oomph. Uh, something I want to talk about. Something I should talk about before I forget. Uh, so the game... This game has changed the way, uh, battle speed works. Attack speed, rather. Uh... So you see here on these stats, there's there's no constitution stat anymore. So what they did was, uh, you know, weapons still have weight. You see the iron sword has a weight of seven. Uh, so to check your unit's attack speed, they measure your weight against, or the, the weapon's weight against uh, the unit's strength. Just straight up. So Ike has seven strength. That means he's not being slowed down at all by the uh, by the iron sword. Uh, the thing is that also applies to. Uh, well, you can see here that he's also got a magic stat, even though he can't use magic. Um, and so the same thing is going to be true of magic-based units. They're also going to have a strength stat. And that's also going to be used uh, to check their attack speed. Uh, it's kind of a major difference. It makes 
strength, like, really good on mages. Like, up to a point. Uh, and then the flip side is that there, there's really, like, no utility for magic on a non-magic user. Well, there's a little bit, uh, but that's... That's getting into uh, the skills, which we haven't... Which we don't have a chance to, like, see just yet. Uh, does anyone here have skill? Ah, Boyd has Tempest. Okay. Tempest doubles the effect of Biorhythm, but right now he's in neutral, so it doesn't matter. Uh... Oh, there's a way... Are they all just neutral right now? No, Oscar's is down, though. Uh, even with something that, like double biorhythm effects, you really don't need to worry about it. Uh, now let's not use the steel sword just yet. going to stream Crystal Chronicles sometime soon. Uh, I could. That could be fun. It's more of a casual thing, not like a full playthrough from beginning to end. Uh, you know, maybe try doing uh, pickup games or things like that. I hadn't strictly planned on it, but I'm not going to rule it out. See, that would be fun, playing uh, with friends and viewers online, I think. Uh, oh no. I have to drop the Iron Axe. Or, no, I'm gonna drop one of these swords. I have so many swords. I'm absolutely twisted with swords. Uh, seize tutorial. The basics are, uh, the enemies guarding a square take the square with Ike. Rolling Crystal Chronicles. That would be... That would be shameful. Alright, we'll give Oscar the kill. Alright, see, at least Oscar, he spins his lance around before jabbing it into uh, the enemy's face. And, uh, that's it. Casual six turns to clear the map. Yikes, uh... Well, Grail's got quite the, uh, reputation or something to that effect. But we don't get to learn about it just yet. This is only chapter one. <laughs> oh, Boyd. All right, it is official. Ike has now become 
a true mercenary. But really, what are the qualifications for being a mercenary anyway? Someone gives you money to to, to fight, you do it. Seems like enough for me. 